Hello everybody, I'm just getting things set up here for the, uh, I'm getting, trying to get the chat room going here because as you can see, i got a new screen that I'm trying out here. Just want to see how that's going to actually work. So, you know, just give me a second, got to type in passwords and all this kind of stuff if I want to be able to do that. So just give me one, one second here. Yeah, I hate doing the whole password thing here, and that's why I've been kind of abandoning that. All right, well, we're just going to abandon that because that's just getting to be a waste of time. But what we got here, and now I can actually get to my controls. Here, let's get this focused up right for you. We've got some more Warcry stuff, and this is actually the thing I really want to focus on here. We've got, as I like to call it, a murder chicken. Here, let's get that out of your way. So you got the palette up in the upper right, and see those colors down there in the, the two boxes? Well, that's what we're going to do on him. But this, I want to do some lava-style effects over here. So I'm just going to make sure I got the my secondary chat thing going. Hey, Trevor, how's it going? Yeah, this is very different. So, like I said, the two dragon faces, that's actually from the last live stream now here we went a little bit more blue but you can see we got the blues and the purple in there and everything I want to do that with our critter here I'm just gonna call him the murder chicken because if I want to do the fire effects and there's a couple of things we're gonna use for that here so we are going to be using our fluorescent paint here that's from Vallejo we're also going to use some of the pro acrylics here from Monument because these guys are really, really intense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock down the brightness here a bit. Now these skulls right here, just wanted to show you those real quick. That comes from this set here from Green Stuff World. Yeah, very interesting. Some neat stuff there. They have some flaming skulls. They also have sheets of regular resin skulls here. Again, all from Green Stuff World. They have a ton of those different resin products like that. And this, I just slapped some primer on it. We're also going to use some contrast paints here. We've got our Leviathan Blue. And what we're going to do is toss that in one of our little bins here. That's what I keep these for because... These things are eight bucks a piece, and if I just do something like this and pour a little bit of the Leviathan blue in there, and I spill that. That's not such a big loss spilling this whole eight-dollar container here. That's uh, that's a no good right there. We don't like that. I'm also going to throw out some of the shyish purple here. Now I may have to get used to where the focal point is on this because, well, like I said, we have not used this yet. I'm also going to throw out some of the wild wood here. Uh, we're just going to throw that right into here. So contrast paints are out. I also enjoy using my blue liner. That's from Reaper Miniatures right there. going to get back to the chat here. Hey, James, how's it going? Oh, hey, George. No, oh, sorry about interrupting the Cypher Lords. Oh, yeah, here, let me show that. So, yeah, obviously this is the starter set stuff, but as George so happily mentioned, this is actually my newest army painting series right here, and this is the color test figure because we had done the bases in the first episode. Episode 2 is always this, figuring out what kind of a color scheme do we want and man I had a blast with this and I can't wait to get to the rest of the figures in the unit yeah as we go along here I'll show you some of the I'll show you some of the other things the bases that sort of stuff all right so again I've got to get used to this so I'm gonna change my focus get a little bit further away like this so here is some of the shyish purple there's some Leviathan blue. And we're going to 
just take a little bit of water here. We're going to use both of these and a little combination of the blue liner because the blue liner is even more of a gray and be darned if it's not a whole lot like the contrast paints in a way. Now I'm going to do the murder chickens in a few different color combinations here. Some of these I actually want to do them on snow bases. There's some other like this one obviously going to be on a lava base so you know fiery murder chicken right. I want to also do some of these as sort of a zinchi type thing with the multicolored wings a little Oh, Keeper of Secrets, I guess, sort of a look to them. All right, once again, I am going to make sure I can see my other chat. But see that window there in between the palette and my reference picture? That's where the chat's supposed to go. It just didn't want to cooperate. And that's, that's been a thing lately. I know folks doing the Twitch thing, and now we're just grabbing some purple here. The shyish purple. It, the, the chats are doing weird things. They disappear just for no reason. So I'm not surprised that that just didn't even let me get it to work. Never know mind. It's actually easier for me at this point just to look at the screen, my own screen, instead of seeing it up on the window there. Now, if you're wondering why I changed the format around Part of it is to make it easier for me to see. Because believe it or not, I can actually see everything a whole lot better on this screen. I have no idea. People will have to let me know if it really makes any difference at all. It's six of one, half dozen of the other. It's basically just kind of different at this point. So, okay. Now, anybody that's seen any of my lava reflection type things, you know that I like to have sort of a cooler base to work from. Not just darker, but also a little cooler and more gray. And you can see that here with this guy. This was another recent session here. You can see we want to do, have all this stuff be fiery and high intensity. That means this stuff has to be low intensity and color, just gray. But there's purple grays, green grays. There's the grays themselves have more color to it. Now we've got our wildwood in here, and we are gonna grab some of that and actually throw in some of the shyish purple too. Believe it or not, it just sort of changes the color around. There's actually a couple of those skulls from Green Stuff World on here. Now what I will do is actually I'm gonna grab a little thing of water right there. So that's just water in there, nothing else. It's all it is. Okay. When you're doing the object source lighting, uh, this is something I preach all the time, ad nauseum. It's best to just kind of do the rip off the band-aid thing and start with it as soon as possible instead of debating because when you start debating with yourself you you're going to lose because one of you is going to win and one is going to lose which means you lose so best to just start off and say you know what i'm doing object source lighting and this is how i'm going to do it and start off with it before you've gone into super details on a face or on a cloak or freehand or whatever just get it over with. Just do the do the object source lighting wherever you're going to put it in. Doesn't have to be finished. Just start it. Just get the process underway. Because then you won't. Well, you won't be losing debates to yourself for one thing. Because believe me, I've seen people. I've they've said, "Oh yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this." And I look at it and said, "Wait, what about all those things you were going to do?" Hey, Gary. Gary is, that's first Gary. He claims the trophy of first Gary. I suppose if I was to do this at a slightly earlier time, there could potentially be more Garys in the room because we can never have too many Garys. Of course, we all know that. That's, that's gonna, that is part of the Book of Wapple now. 
you can never have too many Gearies. Okay, so I'm just going to let that stuff dry <coughs> now. Let's start to throw out some other stuff here. So just introduce you as that dries a little bit. So the fluorescent paint, look at this. Look what's happening to that. That is because this is fluorescent. It is not that color. It's not metallic. It's just that intense. And I'll put some of that on the palette right about here. And there's just a couple of factors I want to show you here. So see how that's pretty thick right there? It's deceptive. Because look at as I see as I paint that out on the palette, see how it doesn't cover anything? That is the hardest thing for people to get used to with the fluorescence. Is that they don't cover, they're really thick. Well, see how well how do I get it to cover? I need it to cover this stuff. Well, that's when we bring in the assistance of some very bright but not fluorescent Pro Acro Monument paints. And you can get these at Cre Creature Caster website. And we'll, we'll throw it over here. Now, you can see that's a little bit more pale in comparison to the fluorescent, but what it's going to do, it's going to give us the coverage that we need. Because, boy, and here I'm going to throw out this, what is this, golden yellow? Yeah. So this is golden yellow right here. Man, this this covers for a yellow. Holy smokes. And, and you can bet that I was using those on my golds here. And one of the other greens that I was doing to kind of enforce that fluorescent green was this one here. It's not a fluorescent, but yet still really intense. So what we'll do is I'm going to let that dry a little more, but I got another base that's primed here and we got some of those real nifty skulls. This is one of the untamed beasts. We got paint on the palette. Let's do this thing. Now, no glow here. We're just all I'm doing is just getting some paint out on here. I have to determine like with that cipher lord, okay, what's the main gist of the color scheme gonna be on this? Light skin, dark skin, tattoos, no tattoos, blood effects. That is why that Cypher Lord color test figure was so important. Because especially with these war cry war bands, you've got several different poses. I mean you got your your leader sculpt, you usually have the the, the more fighter types, the with well, the one tanky type, whatever, usually. It's on a bigger base. Sometimes you have a beast in there that has absolutely nothing to do with the rest of the figures. At least as far as their sculpting is concerned. So definitely more of a challenge than, say, well, a Necron unit where everything is kind of the same. I mean, yeah, there's a little variation on a the theme, but nowhere near like these Warcry figs. Nowhere near. I guess that's kind of what I liked about these, actually. So, yeah, this is nothing but contrast paint. Hey, Anthony, how's it going? Yeah, what do we got here? 213, <clears throat> which means it's uh, 613 in the evening there. It's got to be supper time. Well, I mean, for us, that would actually be almost past supper time, but most folks eat supper later than us. All right, I can set him aside. We're going to grab ourselves another brush here. What we're going to do is start to right away nail in that object source lighting. And we're going to start lighter, especially here where we want ourselves to have a bit of lava. Doesn't have to be any kind of perfection here. Because like I said, we're going to go over the top of this, actually both lighter and darker. The colors mix in there. I really don't care. Not a big deal. This is why I have multiple miniatures. For those not familiar with how I'm, I work, I typically have hundreds, and that's not a joke, there are hundreds of figures of all types, sizes, genres, all at once being worked on. Because this is, well, obviously it's what I do, all day every day and pretty much all night every day <laughs> because it's 
two fourteen in the morning here. There we go. So again, I'll just let that start to dry a little bit. But what we'll do, we're going to grab something like this right here. So again, another one of these colors that's going to cover a bit more burnt red. That is from Pro Acryl. I could use some Reaper paints too, but right now at this point, just looking for some coverage. Going to take that. Going to mix it with again that fluorescent orange. I think that's the other thing that can be deceptive with this is that people get the notion that well, it's fluorescent paint or nothing. Well, really, if you mix other colors with fluorescent paint, those colors become that much more intense. That is what I did with the Cipher Lord. I do it all the time. I mean, I mean all the time. And you can see how all of a sudden, like if this was just the fluorescent paint, well, there'd be no coverage whatsoever here. But because all I want to do is just start to lay this out a little bit, I'm just going to let these things kind of sit here, mix together, let them dry a little bit. See our murder chicken starting to dry off a bit too, so we'll set that aside. And then we have to say, okay, what would we want to do on this? We, do we got the bone color? Do we want a dark fur cloak? Do we want it to be lighter? 3 p.m. Wednesday per time. Yeah, that's... Phew. I found that out the hard way when the Bulldogs had to go to play the playoff game out there. And, yeah, I was kind of used to, okay, it's it's at Eddie Head, it's at MCG or something like that. I was thinking, oh, okay, yeah, heck, it could even be starting at 1-something in the morning my time. No, no, it was out there in Perth, and Australia's got its own time zone different, just like here in the U.S. as you keep moving further west. Oh, man, yeah, that put the West and West Coast. Oh, my goodness. There was not enough Tim Tams to keep me alive for that. Now I'm going to go back to my Wildwood over here. Maybe even thin that down just a touch. Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted to do the darker skin, but I may just do the lighter skin. Now what I like, also like to do is do some language translation here and we are going to grab if I can find my sepia liner here so this is sort of my equivalent to snake bite leather contrast paint and I really do I like to have work with each one I also work with oils too so be prepared because I've been preparing well eh, no pun intended uh, Warcry figures to be painted in oils. That's that is no lie. I've done several army painting series in oils. Oh, let's see. I did the Morgul Knights for Lord of the Rings in oils. Mountains Men in oils. What were some of the other things? There was another big. Oh yeah, the the Winter Soviets for Bolt Action. Those were done with oils. So we have kind of a bone tail here it looks like we'll just get we're using the sepia liner a bit like we would a contrast paint just going to get some darks in there and I'm just doing this as I wait for this to dry and it's, it's starting to get a little yeah that's getting to dry a little more so what I'm going to do here is Start to work in some other colors. And you can see I just I let it mix wet into wet. Where I like, I have to think, okay, what do I do with these? Do I almost make them more like a metallic? Something like that. So let's work on the flip side of this now. And this is where we're going to use a not so you know, heavy coverage color. Oh, I gotta see what Anthony's got a question here. Are liner paints any different to other paints like GW Vallejo? 
it's just they're the Reaper clears and liners have been my favorite paints for many many years. They just seem to be harder to get outside the U.S. So we got blue liner over here. Basically, it's a very intense color, but it's got a little bit of black thrown in there. The liner paints or the clear paints like this, clear purple is just purple. There's no white in there. The clear blue, same thing. Clear red, yellow, green. As you can see, there is just there's no white in this whatsoever. It's pretty much just let's take the green paint or the green pigment, chuck it in a jar, put a cap on it, and boom, good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of that blue liner, and we're going to do this with something like, oh, say the Leviathan blue and the Shyish purple. And now you can see how we already have a bit of shading starting to work its way in here. Now I think I can turn up my brightness here. There we go. Go back to Mr. Chat here. And this is where we start to actually get some color in on this that's not just dark blue. The brushes that I'm using right now, these are basically cheap little well, maybe not so little for most folks. These are, I'll, and I'll show you later on. Got them at Hobby Lobby, but gosh, you can get these synthetic watercolor brushes from just about anywhere. Really, anywhere. And you don't have to get exactly these. The idea is that the synthetic brushes, they just take an awful lot of punishment. Some of these brushes have had actual glue in them earlier this week. And, well, you can see we're painting with them now. So they can really take a beating and just keep on going. Let's get... See, we got more of the... It's, yeah, it's purple, but it's sort of a grayed down purple. That's the key there. Just to, like we said in the very beginning, if we want the your lava effect there to be really intense, to be the brightest thing on the figure, it's not enough to just have one be darker than the other. Now, we've been we're doing a lot with the purple stuff. Here, let's see what we can do with the, maybe a little bit of the Leviathan blue here and start making that a little bit more on the blue side of things. Switch it up a little bit. I don't think I'm going to zoom in on this just yet. <clears throat> With these opening stages, the miniature tends to... I'm usually kind of flinging it around and it would be tough for you just to kind of keep track of it. And this will get this will get lighter, but I'm even going to throw a little bit of pale verdigris green into this. But you can see, what was the first thing I did? Got rid of all the primer. Just covered that up as soon as I could. Because when you do the thing where, okay, you got a space marine, or whatever it is, and you just paint the face, and everything else is black primer or white primer, you're going to find out sort of the hard way that yeah I everything next to black looks light and everything next to white looks dark so you end up with some skin tones that may not be exactly what you were looking for and that can be frustrating uh, aside from the fact that you might actually just hit something you don't want to hit as you're in the middle of painting something Now here we got plenty of brown and such in the rock. Let's get a little bit of blue in there too. Hey there, Hans. How's it going? Now the liner paints, actually, they were almost about to cease their existence until, well, and the clears also. In fact, there were several liners that were discontinued, but I kind of made the sad puppy dog face and all of a sudden the liners came back and actually the, the sepia liner was made for me so 
Now, the, the caveat was I had to teach classes using them. Well, I've kind of been doing that since, oh, I don't know, 2014, 2013. Yeah. Taught one or two classes using those paints. We're also just working in a little bit. Yeah, this is no dry brush here. All the paint's still wet. It's all still nice and wet. Set that aside. Let's see what we can do over here. Let's see if we can't make ourselves a flesh tone. Sepia liner. Some of that burnt red. I'm just going to grab some of that maggot white. That's a bluish white there. Let's see what we can do with that. Now let's get a touch more of the yellow in here. And let's do the skin tone test. So we have ourselves a nice dark skin tone there. Let's see if we can lighten that up a touch. Make sure we get enough of the sepia liner in there. So there we go. We have some nice, quick little skin tones. Because we used to buy the different skin tones, and I was always massively disappointed in those. I mean, just universally, dwarf flesh was too dark, too atomic, and elf flesh was too light and too washed out. Then I realized, you know, you used to be a portrait painter. Why don't you just mix your own flesh tones? It's so much easier. It really is. I've seen people mix some really amazing skin tones because this is the other lesson for folks that are newer to this whole insanity. thing that I'm painting this on, that's a jar of Reaper paint or what used to be years ago, long before they started putting them in here. Man, needless to say, all these colors are all gone, long since gone. So you and GW, everybody that makes paint has a tendency to either kill that one color or two colors that you really love or just kind of wipe out the entire line and do something else. And then what are you going to do? Then I see people looking for program or apps or whatever that can translate what used to be this is now this. What if you could just kind of take your own colors and, and make them yourself? Uh, you could save a whole bunch on paint, that's for sure. So again, just working on that while I wait for stuff like this to dry a little bit. Now I'm going to need a bit more of my maggot white out here. I'll throw that over here. Hopefully the palette doesn't move around. I could actually tape it down for a YouTube Live. I keep forgetting that. But now you'll see some of this stuff starts to get a bit, a little bit lighter here. But not too light because I haven't actually added any of my glowing effects yet. Just waiting for that to dry. And no, I don't have a hair dryer up here to accelerate that process. I just want to see how much purple do I want to get in there. So speaking of which, one of these, like that, is my shyish purple. We're going to make that a little lighter. And we're going to throw that in here. Right about there. Because... Do I want this? Because usually these membranes like this end up being lighter than the surrounding, or darker, sorry, kind of in shadow, whatever. But I think it's kind of more fun when they're actually lighter. Sometimes if they're light enough, you can almost paint sort of a membrane type effect there. You maybe take some, put some veins in there, whatever. This is almost like a color test figure. I think the other thing I'm trying to do is see just how much this is going to wiggle around because that's the other thing with GW figures. 
of the last several years is that they tend to be standing up on tails and one feet and very delicately balanced. And they tend to kind of bounce. They're, it's like trying to paint a squig hopper. They're, they're literally hopping around as you're painting them. So see those feathers get more of a purple. We'll do the same on these interior feathers. Yeah, very hard to find the reaper. It's kind of the same deal in Europe. And I tried to tell them that at ReaperCon, and they seemed really shocked by that. So that is why I, I try to hit, kind of do each one. I try to use also what's the Green Stuff World Intensity inks. I got a bunch of episodes on, on the Patreon page that compare all those. I've got YouTube live sessions where we compare those, especially the early days of the contrast paints when I just kind of speculated, okay, this contrast paint might substitute for a sepia liner. This contrast paint, eh, maybe that'll substitute for a brown liner or a gray liner. So far, I think I've only used maybe 14 of the contrast paints. That's about it. So this is starting to get a little bit more of a purple look to it, which uh, it's neither here nor there. It just kind of happens to be becoming more purple. Now let me see if I can pop that one step closer. Might have to readjust my focus. Like I said, this is a whole new screen setup here. Without a doubt, easier for me to see. That's for sure. And actually, there is, from a, I don't know, practical standpoint, there's more usable space on the screen. I guess the downside is my reference pictures really get sort of smushed and smashed down into the corners. But uh, something had to kind of give. There's only so much space on the screen. And there's just the one screen. That's all there is. Now I'll eventually get into these and start to put in more of a feather type of a texture. But for right now, this is something I like to do. If, I, if I'm not doing a full-fledged, say, Zinchi-type, multicolored wing transition, I want to at least have something like this. So, again, we're going to grab our Leviathan Blue over here. Oh, yeah, Gary says same thing as in New England. Or New, New England, New Zealand. And the shipping cost. And, well... Now there's that whole insanity with the post office. Actually, I just found out today that they essentially lost my second package in four weeks, four and a half weeks, because I had planned on painting Army of the Dead, those new ones. The Herald and the Standard Bear, the Standard Bears and the King. I was really looking forward to that. And I, after a month of not getting them, I said, ah, uh, okay, so why is the Lizardman Blood Bowl team going to get here before something I ordered two and a half weeks before that? So, yeah, otherwise this, this could have been Army of the Dead, the brand new figures. But we're, we're just going to have ourselves some fun with our, with our war cry. Murder chicken. Here, let's get a little bit of this blue on that piece of blade sticking out there. All right, I think we've we're starting to get some drawing here on our base. Now, when you mix the fluorescence in there. I guess that's the other thing you got to be ready for is it can take a little longer to dry. The other thing on these skeletons, and, well, Trevor sent me a really fantastic picture of 
not skeleton, uh, skulls, well, skeletons too, is that they are not that bleached bone that you always see all the time. They actually pretty much should be stained almost black, really. That's a more accurate color for skulls. I was, when I started doing the the Bone Reapers and other, I got some und other undead stuff coming this way to sort of show you how to do the skeleton thing. You can believe that the skulls are, and stuff are not going to be this bleached bone thing. They're actually going to be more of a stained type of a bone look. So here I'm just, like I said, this is a liner brush that I'm using, and we'll go over these real quick here. So I'll get a few. We'll do them all in Cotman's here. So we got three brushes here. Now this is a spotter. These two are liner brushes. Essentially, especially here, the tip on these two guys is pretty much exactly the same. The difference is the bristles are twice as long, which means it's going to hold twice as much paint. They actually tend to be a little bit more on the firm side. So you get a little more spring to it. And you're even going to just toss in a touch of that fluorescent yellow there. Now, believe it or not, we actually have to go a little bit lighter with some of our lava. But we're, we're going to start doing a little bit on the darker side here. So that's the Pro Acryl orange there. And let's start to take some of this down and actually almost add what's tantamount to some lava chunks where the lava started to cool a bit. I just I had to wait for this to dry, and then I'm gonna have to wait for it to dry a little bit more to keep going with some of the rest. And you can see I, I concentrate more along where the rocks are here, and in the middle. There's a little bit less of that. Here, I'll try and turn it where you can see it. Anthony prefers the stained, dirty bone look rather than the bleach look. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Well, it's easier. We, we've talked it over many times. Like, so what is it with people always wanting to do that bleached bone kind of look? Well, it's, it is easier. You know, you, you paint it the light bone color, and then you just throw some kind of a quick little wash over it, and poof, you're done. So I, I understand that. I can understand that. Now here's our little twist. I'm going to start to get some of that reflected light up here now. I'll turn him upside down. And that fluorescent paint that's in there is just enough to keep this transparent. But just like weathering, chipping, rust, all that kind of stuff, too much can be too much, and it can be too much in a real hurry. Just before you know it, you've kind of gone, you know, just batty with the stuff and done a little too much glow. And it's you can always, just like this, start out a little bit darker with it, and then work your way back up. Now there's still some areas on this that I'm waiting for it to dry. Look at this. This is nowhere near a dry brush. There's plenty of paint in here. I'm even letting the my new color in here mix in with that. And remember, what are we using to light this here? So-called light it. We're using the shadow color. Basically, we're using the shadow color or the darker color in the lava for our light over here. So that's an indication of we're giving ourselves some some room for maneuver. We can't just blam start out with orange right here because when the reflection is lighter than the light source people are gonna go what's up with that? Not so sure about that so this is one way to manage that make sure that doesn't really happen. I just have to think, okay, what's going to actually be 
facing towards the lava here and what is not so this again not a dry brush it's a feathered brush stroke no pun intended or maybe it is just a quick little feathered brush stroke here catching those edges now I'm going to do the same over here in, in some ways this wing is more like a, say I was painting a, a bust or whatever and, and if you're doing any kind of light source stuff on a bust it gets weird because it's almost always off camera and by off camera I mean you don't see where the lights coming from you're just sort of painting it in on the bust well this wing there's no base over here but we're just gonna assume that's sort of a sea of lava there we'll just assume that and that's why this wing that's why this foot that's why this blade is getting some of the but not so much up here because I'm gonna say that the the rock blocks some of that and see we're not being super careful here either and this is what I would normally consider the shaded base coat phase and that is a base coat and I'm not kidding it's where some people would just put a flat color down I sort of begin with some basic shading now let's just do a real quick thing here to get this base out of the way or the the edge of the base here let's just do this real quick because that'll be distracting otherwise that's better it also gives me a better handle on how light or dark the lava is one thing you'll never see me use for shading stuff ever is black there is one purpose for it and you're seeing it right here that's it that is the extent of how I use black and I'm just gonna do the same thing over here real quick black is done that's it you ain't gonna see it anymore now I'm gonna put my fluorescent orange back out here I'm also going to try mm -hmm, here we go some clear orange that's gonna go over there we're going to take the fluorescent paint it's gonna go into that what was it the burnt red we're going to take some of our wildwood here and we're gonna go even darker with some of these little areas in the lava here and then we're also going to go lighter on the other side of these things so in this area here where it's just sort of one color of orange well there's more coming there it's not going to remain that but what I'm trying to do here I think you can see now that that perimeter of the base I guess is done you can see I'm working my way out to that perimeter so what we do is we're taking those somewhat dark orange chunks and we're breaking those up into even smaller chunks like here it almost kind of looks like giraffe markings and that uh, kind of does let's see where I'm just going right to the edge of the base but let's see we break that up a little bit like so now let's do some of that here too so all of a sudden the, the lava is not quite so intense anymore and I'm actually going to use some of that here on him crazy as it sounds some sometimes reflections have shadows uh, it's really not the best way I can describe it but it's sort of the only way I can think of at the moment so you have to when you're doing something like this that's another thing to sort of keep in mind is that 
like there in the, in the neck or up here it's not so much that it's illuminating it it is just affecting the color it's tinting it it's making it a little bit more red that that's all and remember we are going to be going back and forth here we're going to be going back into this with lighter colors but i'm just now that this has really started to dry much more thoroughly i can start to get into some sort of inverse lighting effects on the rest of the base. Now, I don't want to forget these rocks over here. And Oh, uh, if you're wondering what these rocks are, it's bulletin board cork. And I have, a again, every, almost every other army painting series has some form of cork basing as part of it. Even the Cypher Lords are mostly cork bases with the Sculpey on top. And like I said, I'll bring those out a little bit later, but we want to keep this roll going here. We we have a lot to do. We have a bunch to get through here, and we want to make sure we have time for that. And I also do like to answer people's questions. Now, what we haven't put out here yet, well, we did, but we used it all up. We're going to throw some of that golden yellow. Again, that's the pro acryl right there. This is where we get to play with our long liner brush. Just going to tilt this where you can hopefully see it. And this is our first foray. into making this a bit more on the lighter side in here. For the few really, really bright points in all of this, I'll probably go in, uh, you know, take a little bit of white or something, do that. But some of this is actually still trying to dry. So that's, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drop that in there. I'm not actually really dragging the brush along it and just sort of dropping it on there. Here, let's do a few of these. and There's nothing to say that, and actually the plan is to go over the top of a lot of this, this yellow, these other things, with just the straight up fluorescent paint as what I've just started calling a dry glaze. Now, sorry you can't see some of that in the bird. The murder chicken is just going to cover that up. It is what it is. Now, this is my clear orange over here. We are mixing that with the fluorescent. And now we're going to find some lighter areas. Uh, Mr. Murder Chicken. I've actually called them this so often, I have actually forgotten what they are actually called. I, I really have no idea. I used to know at one point. And heck, it's all I can do to not name my Cypher Lord characters after characters from Xena Warrior Princess. All right, there's the Chakram thing. What can I say? Actually, I saw a battle report the other day. Where we were watching them to try and get a quick handle on the game. And I kept thinking, well, wait a minute. I assembled those things, and they had shock rims on them. They, they've got a ranged attack. It's just maybe they never quite read their army rules or whatever and didn't realize they could use those doubles to at least compete somehow with a ranged attack. I think you can see what's starting to happen now. We're not getting too light too fast. We're also using two more transparent materials here. This clear orange and the fluorescent paint are much more translucent than what we were just using on the lava itself. But you can see this is where we're focusing a lot on our lighter lava color. Out here, not so much. Why? Because it's basically blocked. 
there's no reason why there should be a whole bunch of glowing orange there. It just doesn't make sense. And what you could do, oh gosh, do I even have one that's easily accessible here? You could do it with your phone light or whatever, but there's these little tiny flashlights like this. And if I turn this off, so see how that's giving you a bit of a, a sense of what the what color is or it's going to get hit there with that light. But I mean, there's any little tiny flashlights you could use for that. But it's an idea. I mean, heck, you could take the miniature, you know, set it up uh, in your little photo thing or something like that, and actually just take pictures of it like that, and you would have reference pictures. That is if you have the colored lights. Now, if you're just using a regular flashlight, well, you won't quite get that effect. Well, obviously, he's a Malifaux player. Have you played the game, and do you have a favorite? Uh, well, Kathy, she really did play Malifaux. She still has. And we're talking the old metal figures. She still has uh, her, her Malifaux stuff. She was really disappointed when the, the local community just sort of vaporized. Uh, the ones that I've painted, again, we're talking the old metal ones. Oh, gosh, it was the avatar of something. It was a female character that had a sort of the, the light bird in one hand and the black bird in the other. You know what? That's Now that you mentioned the Malifaux stuff, I've got to gotta grab some of that. Now, of course, now what's happening with the Patreon pages, people are saying, I want to see this. I don't have it. It's going to be there tomorrow. You have no excuse. So... <laughs> That's why you're going to be seeing Aeronautica. But I'm going to have to see if I can scrounge up some Malifaux stuff. Because those would be, I think, really fun to paint. I'm sure there would be object source lighting galore on those. What were the, the showgirls, right? They they were sort of... Uh, now, some of them, they sort of just had masks for faces or whatever. Those looked kind of interesting. I think yeah, now that you mention it, uh, th thanks for bringing that up because I, I think I don't know. I know Kathy has some. She has some Malifaux figures that are still unpainted. I think M maybe I can get her to <laughs> think about painting some on her stream too. But yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, you you may have to be my spirit guide on the Malifaux thing there. I have to. Trevor has very generously been my spirit guide on the the AOS stuff and 40k stuff. Kind of like how I had no idea that they'd actually made Sisters of Silence. And I went, huh? Those are the things I wanted to scratch sculpt back in the day myself. But lo and behold, they already exist. So I'm trying to find me some of those. But yeah, tomorrow I'll just Start perusing images of Malifaux figs and see what just kind of leaps out at me. Because I think those could be... I think there's some really neat marble bases I could do. Obviously, cobblestone. And that's where we, maybe we could use some of the green stuff, little texture rollers. Ah, see this? Jeez. Oh, I'm just kind of painting along mindlessly here, not really telling you what the heck's going on. Got the clear orange with some of the fluorescent. And see now how we're starting to get some lights here, some reflected lights in our lava. Oh, we got a long way to go. And this is, I always use that sort of value scale of 1 to 10 sort of thing. We're at, I don't know, a 6, if, if 10 is the darkest. We're, we're maybe at a five. We are nowhere near a, a two, much less the the one. And the one is something we save. We save that to the very, very end. And, well... <laughs> oh, hey, first, last. How you going? How you going? How is it going? I think I might have had 
three and a half hours of sleep last night, so you'll have to forgive me for any word salad that happens. Yeah, and, and word salad's not quite as good for your digestive system as real salad, which I did have today. Yeah, again, this is a more beat up craft brush right here. Now I've got some that are a little bit more on the pristine side. So this is the exact same number eight round, but this one's been a little more beat up. I'm going to show you what they look like when they are new in package. There you go. Five bucks for 12. You can get them on the uh, website there. Sometimes I, I remember to put the link up on the website. Or not on the website, but on the, oh, what would you say, the description of the video. Actually, yeah, look for, if you're watching this all the way through, and you can watch these later, you don't have to necessarily watch them live. When you get to the end, well, you can just fast forward there. There are always links to two more videos that are kind of related to what it is that I'm doing here. The showgirls have been resculpted, so worth the. Yeah, that was just. I mean, it's the thing I remember. Uh, well, when when you think about it, my dark Eldar that I did, they were all on on jet bikes and and witches or witches or however you pronounce the name. Now we're going. This is where we're going back to our more opaque stuff here. Just a quick alert. Opaque alert. But they were sort of dancing around, kind of like the showgirls. So, yeah, I think that might not be a bad place to start, something that I'm familiar with. I think Kathy's got metal versions of those. See how we, we're underlighting this now? And remember what a mess this thing was? This was an unholy mess. It just looked like absolute nothing. Well, for those... For the veterans, or as I call them, the survivors, they know, you know, not to fear, <laughs> don't be afraid, because all of a sudden you turn around and poof. Yeah, wait till you st wait till I start painting stuff with oils. It happens even faster. So, see, we're starting to get ourselves a nice little underside glow here, uh, Mr. Chicken. There. Now I'm actually going to use this brush again because I'm, it's again, not a dry brush. It's just a feathered brush stroke, but we're going to do that now. Oh, look, on the feathers. Oh, let me bring back my brightness here a bit. And there's just enough of the fluorescent orange and just enough of the clear orange to keep that from getting too bright too fast just looking to pick up an edge or two here and you see how we tried to establish this glow as early as we could I haven't there's nothing on the other side of this that even approaches a highlight But let, let's say, and this is something, well, a lot of things I just, I've learned the hard way. And these, all of these tutorials and stuff are, are ways for you to avoid those hard lessons. And that's kind of a big part of it, really. Is so that you don't have to kind of go through some of those really painful, well, gee, wish I had known that sooner moments. Because that can happen a lot. Here, I'm gonna get some of this. Is it has a little bit more of that burnt red in in there. I'm gonna get some of that on the underside of the tail. And we'll just make sure we have enough of that on the underside of his beak there. Got to get the other wing now with the somewhat lighter 
Want to see how that kind of spreads out in a filbert type of a brush? That's I'm basically making a homemade filbert because you know a 35 cent brush wasn't cheap enough. We're basically creating a whole nother brush for ourselves here. And because we have the, all that natural transparency built into what we're doing, this is where you get that funky thing of the dry glaze that I keep talking about in a lot of the videos lately. Now, when you see any of the other videos, they, they will not have this nifty little screen here that separates everything like this. Also, I was thinking about giving them those blue eyes. I thought that would be a nifty contrast with the reds. So, and contrast-wise, let's let's do our little lesson here that we like to do. So we have all these cool colors here, right? Let's go in. Let's go with zoink. Now let's get black and white. The glow is still there, right? But when we bring back the color, that's where you start to see that difference between warm and cool oh hey tyler how's it going welcome in let's see we've really only been at this for an hour that's about it i think the last one i did was at least uh, i was three hours 15 minutes somewhere in that range technically we were actually painting two miniatures at the start of this we're just waiting for some things to dry. Now this part of the chest really has to pick up some some more of the orange. So we're doing that. But we're just going to keep that in balance for right now. We are not going to let that get too light too fast. Just making sure my mic is in the right spot. I thought it actually had gotten moved a bit. See, even here, plenty of paint on the brush, but this is what the liner brush lets you do. You couldn't do this with a spotter. First of all, you really beat the snot out of that poor little spotter brush. But see how much there's enough firmness to this liner brush. It lets me do that. Now, these Cotman's, they are synthetics, just so people know it's not a sable brush. That's the other thing that gives it that resiliency is it is not a sable. Sable brush would give a lot more. Sable brushes, obviously, they got their purpose. Everything has a purpose. We're trying, we're using, you know, the, these things here that we, we feel, okay, this is their purpose. We'll use them for that. Now, this is the Pro Acryl Bright Ivory. I do want to establish here some kind of lightest light for the lava, which means yellow's got to get back in there. Again, that's also from Pro Acryl. Going to mix some of the white with that, and this will be a very intense light color, or at least it should be. We're hoping it's going to be. Now, I'm actually going to go with a slightly smaller liner brush here. One of those ones that you saw me pick up before wherever that went. One second, here we go. We're just going to try and put in some of these lighter areas right in here like so. I don't want to say it's connect the dots or whatever. because we're actually going to work in the opposite direction from this. But we needed the lightest lights because I won't know how much I can do as far as my lighter reflections and such on the murdered chicken until we get this going. So there's some of those brighter spots. But now we're going to go in a different direction here. We're taking the orange. And we're actually going to make even more transitions out of this here. 
Still got a little bit of the fluorescent in there, but this is that whole idea of the dry glaze. Working our way slowly across our little lava pond here. And as I look at this, I will be doing some glazes of red over this. I mean, there's a couple of things I could do. I could take the one of the contrast reds and water one of those down and do that. Because I, I do have the contrast medium, so maybe we play with that. That, that could be that could be something fun to do. Not that moment hasn't quite arrived yet. I'm just going to try and move some of that glow up to here. Now let's work our way even lighter here. We have a specially reflective surface like this blade here. So let's make sure we have to make sure we pick that up. Yeah, this is the Pro Acryl orange infused with some of our fluorescent orange. Let's do some of that again there. And the fluorescent orange is from Vallejo. I've used a ton, especially lately, a ton of different fluorescent paints. I've tried the Green Stuff World, Scale 75. Heck, I've even tried other Vallejo fluorescents. And after trying all of them, if you're going to say, okay, you can choose one. Out of all those, there's only one you can choose. I'd stick with the original. I'd, I'd stick with the Vallejo fluorescents, just pound for pound. They they do what I need them to do. They're, to me, easier to control and more consistent as I work with them. The scale 75s have the closest consistency as far as their thickness goes. But as far as the intensity goes, they are maybe uh, 80, maybe as little as 70% of the intensity of the the Leo fluorescence, which that doesn't really work for me. I need that in intensity if I'm going to do these lighting effects. Now I've used on the on the Necron painting tutorial series. I've used the scale 75 on that because I was working mostly with the fluorescent green. And then on the Cypher Lords, I was using the fluorescent purple because I've never really had a fluorescent purple before. That, that's the other thing I try to do, and, and most the folks that are familiar with what I do, they know I'm always trying out new things because you never know what may work, and, and it could work better than what you've been trying before or what material may actually be better than what you already are using. You never know. It could be better. It could be cheaper. It's the... Boom. It's the model line. I tried the game and I accidentally ended up with the Mecha paints. And obviously those are very thin. They're probably meant to be used with an airbrush. And they were just, uh, I was not amused by those to say the least. Now see, we're starting to put a little bit of a feather texture in there now. We're just starting to get a little, starting to put that in. Remember, we still got all of our blue and purple yet to go on the flip side of this. But I need to see how far I'm going with my highlights here before I put regular highlights on the other side of him. So it's important stuff to get through here first. Here, let's do some more wings. 
all the while keeping in mind that I will be doing some glazing to tone all of this down. Let's spin him over this way. We'll do the same thing here. Just start to again infuse some feather texture in there. Now I, I, I can also go the other way too when I start putting in some of the darker colors and maybe some of the darker reds in here. Well, not every little bit of feather here has to be lighter. It can also we can use some dark to separate those. Now I want to make sure there is yeah. So you can see that the lightest we've gone so far on those reflections of light is just an orange. We have not even touched yellow yet. This is the first yellow we're putting on any of those. And it's really going to be focused, especially here where he's quite literally hanging over the lava like this or leaping over it, I guess, is probably more accurate. Because I'm going to assume these guys also have the fly ability. An awful lot of things seem to have the fly ability, which is interesting. I, I saw some battle reports with Squeak Hoppers doing their boingy boingy thing, and oh my gosh. I thought they flew across the board in a old style fantasy game. Holy smokes. There. Now we've got to get some more yellow on this side. We did it on the other side. Now we're going to do it on this side. And as, as far as this new setup goes, it's kind of a lot easier for me not to just, well, it could be an artifact of me being able to see it easier. Things tend to wander off the screen a whole lot less. And you're actually seeing this closer than you used to because I want to say there's about a half an inch around here that was essentially almost dead screen that I just couldn't it just couldn't be used because of how close I'm holding this to the magnifier light and actually to my face so remember there's our imaginary lava pond on the back side of that there so I have to keep thinking about that too and now let's extend some of our orange up on these little membranes here on the side of his face. Yeah, like so. Now, if I want to do that, the eye and that icy blue, who knows, maybe even here we take a little bit of artistic license and we almost fudge things a little bit. Maybe get a little more orange glow than would normally be happening. But then there's... Well, I am hoping I don't just walk down the street tomorrow and see one of these murder chickens coming my way. Because that would be different. I'm just heading out to the store. Let's do some lighter reflections on our, on our rocks here. There we go. And all of this is less than an hour because we, we talked about some stuff. We were putting paint out on the palette. We were actually painting another figure. We were mixing flesh tones. So this is potentially just 45 minutes max or so of actual concentrated time on just this thing. That is... There's a couple of aspects of the shaded base coat. And obviously one of them is speed. And in every one of my army painting series that I do, it, it's not just okay. We, we figure out a color scheme and we do that. We 
we time some of the things. We say, okay, that took 20 minutes. Maybe that took 15 minutes. Doesn't sound like much. Oh, wait, I've got to do this 30 more times. And then we sort of say, okay, yeah, that particular effect, that's going to happen on something that's more of a special figure. We are not going to do that on every single line troop because that just is too much. And that, that's what I love about the Army Painting series, and that's why I'm glad that the the Warcry stuff sort of came along, because it it does mesh with that, that, that kind of video really, really well. There. Who knows? Yeah, I'm just going to sneak in some yellow there. Now... Again, we still have not gone into the brightest of the brights. Maybe we do bring in a smaller brush here and start to think about that. So that is, again, the Pro Acryl yellow now. Here, let's find ourselves a few bright highlights here. Really going to focus on where he's getting mighty close to that lava. Oh, let's do some more. Still, if we're looking at that value scale again, putting a number to it, we're still maybe at a light three. Ah, okay, maybe a two. Certainly not at that one. We are not at that brightest of the bright yet. Now we're going to back off here and do something slightly darker. Once again, using those liner brushes. Oh, sorry about that, Tyler. Well, have a good night's rest. And well, then you'll be you'll be able to catch this tomorrow or whenever it is convenient for you. And yeah, if if you want to, for those that maybe are in here for the first time, I learned the hard way myself that if I want to get notified about everything it's yes you subscribe but you also I guess have to hit the all notifications because I would sit there and go well wait a minute I subscribe to all these different pages how come I see this stuff a month later or a week later or whatever did I not subscribe to them well I did but I didn't click the bell thing for all notifications so apparently you got to do that that, well, since I've been doing it, I now get a whole bunch of notifications that I never used to get, which is, that's good. Certainly better than not getting them at all and finding something after the fact. Now, let's see if we can break up some of these patches into smaller patches. And I'm also going to darken some of those up now because I think they've had a good old chance to dry. A lot more of that burnt red. So we're just taking some of the contrast wildwood, darken that down. And then I think you'll see what we're going to do here. Let's get it out of from under the bird. There, now you can see it. So we're going to do more than just darken that down. We're also going to add some, I don't want to call them small rocks, but in here, just some smaller things. We got the smaller brush going, so now we can do that. Breaks up that surface a bit. Makes it a little more interesting. It also makes the brighter colors look that much brighter. Do some of that here too. And you can see that these, that the, I'm having that lava kind of cool as it approaches our stationary rocks a bit. Sometimes you can drive yourself a little crazy going back and forth with the lava. And there's different types of lava, lava too. You got the pillow lava and this kind of lava. So it also never hurts to just, well, do the Googles. 
Find some pictures. All right, a couple of darks over here too. Maybe even on this side of the rocks, but I gotta make sure I don't lose. Don't want to lose that bluish gray. Look, see that, that rock right there. Certainly need to. There, I'm gonna darken down the flip sides of some of these rocks here. They're getting a little bit too yellow and orange. And all that is is just the contrast wildwood, mixing it in with some of the burnt orange and our and our dark red, making it even that much darker. I gotta sneak a few of those little guys in here. Okay, now you can see it. Tough for me to reach, but there. There will be some things maybe when they, you see the, the cover image of this, you go, wait a minute, when did he do that? There's some things I will just have to do later, and there's just no other way around it. Now, this is where we start to do some of those darker glazes of our reddish tone here. Again, using that liner brush. And we need to do some of that here for sure. Don't forget this side. But all of this has a little bit of that fluorescent paint infused in it. We're just using water right now for the for this little bit of a glaze right here. It's almost more of a pin wash in some ways. Another thing that the liner brushes are very handy and adept for. Okay. Yeah, so we've got ourselves some nifty some nifty glow right there. Let's let's flip over onto his back. And one of these is our blue, which is this one here, that's our Leviathan blue. Now I'm actually using the Pro Acryl white here because I'm looking for a little bit more opacity in all this. And I'm just going to start to bring out some lighter tones here. Now I did promise you a little bit of that green. I've got something here from, well, let's just use another another Reaper paint. So that's mint green. It, it's basically sort of a tur bright turquoise color there. It's going to shift this a touch. I'm going to get me a little, little water here. One second. Just wanted to get the mic out of the way so you didn't get blasted with me drinking stuff in your ear because that's probably no fun. And at, at first, the first kind of greens that we throw in here won't be very noticeable at all. And you say, well, wait a minute, why green next to purple? Well, for those that have watched any of my videos before, especially those Cypher Lords, where there's just green and purple next to each other all the time, they actually are really good. They're good buddies. They like to hang out together. But they also, ironically enough, when you mix purple and green together, you basically get gray. And what's the thing that we sort of want to juxtapose all of this reddish-orange glow against? that's super intense, we'd really rather have it go up against gray. So if we're, if we're putting in that gray just kind of by default by using those two colors, well, hey, there you go. So see, now we start to pull out a little more feather texture here, a few more lights. So we, and you can see the difference in these two, the all the orange down here, but now 
cooler colors up here. And let, let's say this was an army painting series. We would be timing this. Oh, hey, Bethany. Yeah, actually, this was more of a, it's kind of more of the normal time, right, for starting these things, about two-something my time, six-something your time. I think it should be, yeah. Well, now it's, it's 325, so there. Oh, what? Uh, it's always guess the time zone here I'm on the workbench. Now let's do the other side of this. Well, I think with this one here, the, the biggest thing is that I've, I've played around more and more with using the Pro Acryls as basically a a way to make stuff that's normally super transparent, more opaque. Well, I don't know if you had a chance to watch the Cypher Lord video yet or not, but that one for sure was, I was really using the, the Pro Acryls in the role as kind of the enforcer, where they were basically helping to make that any of the fluorescent paints or whatever or on the golds to really get some massive coverage there 725 okay yeah I've kind of working on about what three four hours of sleep here or something like that so the, the brain is not functioning as it probably should I can you can you know take this even more towards the green if I want. But let's do a little more of the that teal sort of jade blue along here on the face. And this is not so much any kind of finished whatever, it's just me taking notes basically. Uh, it's almost like a little bit of sh painting shorthand around just I leave sort of a note there I say you know what okay later on go back and do that but let's not forget our purple either and I'm just looking to get a few here let's hit that I all the while I have to remember well gee if this gets too light that's really gonna kill that's gonna kill my buzz on the glow there so God always be aware of that now I, I suppose I can always go lighter on the glow but I think you can see the slippery slope there talk about codex creep that, that's color creep right there which sounds kinda weird Now at the fringes of these, at the fringes of the wings starting to now get the I don't know the the natural color of the wings, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, we're just gonna work in a little bit of our purple color here on the feathers we'll go back in with a more detailed thing later on we're still just I don't want to say I'm still considering this almost a base coat but it's kind of that All right, obviously I think we've we're okay we finally advanced past the base coating stage how's that so I think this is my purple over here yeah that's my purple I'm gonna take some of this again that's the Pro Acryl White, which is really going to make that much more opaque. And now I start to work in some lighter colors here in the purple. Heck, I might even bring some pink out here so that we get some more differences even in the purples. So we got the difference between the kind of the purples and the blues. 
but then maybe even some purple that's a little less gray. So let's let's find ourselves something that could potentially just work for that. Uh, what the heck? We will. This is another thing from Pro Acryl. This is a bit like the Reaper Clear Red. So that's transparent red. I'm gonna throw that over here. It could be handy for the lava too. So what we're gonna do is take that. Basically, make a almost a magenta out of it there. We'll mix that into our shyish purple mix, and yeah, okay. So now we've yeah, let me get some of that red paint out my fingers so it doesn't look like I just sliced myself open. Because that, <laughs> that could really freak some people out that are just kind of coming in there and say, What the heck happened to his hand? Interesting that this guy's almost starting to get a kind of a slanish vibe with the by adding in some of the pinks here, but not everywhere, not everywhere. But even here, on maybe some of these feathers here, instead of just having the entire feather be that blue, why not inject a bit of the pink in there also? We've got these membranes here. Let's throw a little bit of that in there. How about his tongue? I get this was the first place I was thinking of putting it, and then I thought mm, there's some other places that could be nifty for that. Because what are you doing now? We're starting to get. You got the orange there. This is still sort of kind of on the reddish side, I guess you could call it that. But yet now. It's it's a much cooler red than we're gonna get from our glow for sure. Uh, where are we at? We're over here. And oh my gosh, we have a low we can go so much further or farther with our lights here if we want. Now I could even go the opposite way. Maybe I say, you know, I just want this to be darker and then do some dark glazes over this. But something tells me I actually don't mind having a little bit more light to this. So we will continue to add some more of the highlight type things. And obviously the back of that is nowhere near as dramatic as this side. I'll never forget the Golden Demons where I'd done a, it was a converted Carnosaur. I put wings on them, sculpted it, did all this stuff, put them on a lava base like this. And they never really bothered to turn it over to see that I had done all of the object source lighting on the wings. That was, that was somewhat disappointing, I gotta say. So I think what I ended up doing was the, couple years later I just took him and I put him on a different base something that more like this that really could show that he was actually there with the glowing wings now here we're going really straight up magenta ish pink on the tongue here let's do that over here Oh, what the heck, I might even do some of that into here. He's starting to look a little bit more on the chaos side of things, which, that's good. Maybe I'm going to tone that down as it goes back into his mouth there. But let's get a little more of this intense, lighter pink magenta here. So if, if I was using the Reapers, I'd be doing that with clear red. If it was the contrast paints, probably fleshed here, red. Yeah, instead of the, because the Blood Angels red is very much more orange than this. So it'd definitely be fleshed here, red. I've got that. Might still use that for some other secondary 
glazing of stuff on this guy. But what I want to do here, I want to see about those those eyes. Maybe getting them to be that that blue like you see in the reference pictures. There. And what we'll do is we'll take another blue. We'll do a, a glaze over the top of that. But for right now, I just want to get my lighter colors in there. I can't glaze something that is just all dark. There. And now let's get some of these spines here since we have this lighter color handy. Oh, for sure up here. And you notice that I like to sort of build evenly or if I have a color going, I say, you know what, I need that over here too. It does a few things. It keeps that color unity together. Yeah, so it's faster. It's more efficient. And it can sort of keep you from getting bored more easily because you're, you're not trapped into just one area. You're kind of moving all around the miniature. There's just so many reasons to not let yourself get just sucked into one part of the miniature only. So now I'm going to get some of these spines lighter just using that, again, the liner brush pick some of these out I will be glazing back over them again later on but I just gotta I had to hit those first I'm actually gonna go kind of sideways with my brush here now let's let's see if we can't figure out what is going to be our lightest light here on these wings Is this going to be the latest light? Maybe. But you can certainly see a little more texture in the wings. There's very little that's actually sculpted on here. There's a tiny bit of texture, but I am certainly putting on a lot more than what's there. Definitely magnifying what's there more just with my Uh, obviously, they intended a you know certain look to this. Here, let's do that here. And I really have to keep a firm grasp on this thing because I also he's spindly like all of these type of things. They are they got they're kind of spindly, so you can compare this side here to that side over there, and now it really starts to bounce nicely against our our lava glow there and now you can see why I did not early on mess around with this we we did go in here we worked on this side when we were waiting for the lava areas to dry when we wanted to just get some dark in place and say okay how much blue do we want in places how far do we want that shyish purple mix to extend or not Again, yeah, just finding some more of these little feather texture things here and I can certainly take a smaller brush that little tiny spotter that you saw earlier remember I was showing you that you could take one of those and do even more fine stuff I could draw each and every little feather thing here. Well, that's that's great, but there's there's six of these to do, and would I want to do that six times, or do I just kind of go more of an impressionist style here, and just give you, well, the cliff notes, like I said earlier. It's like cliff notes feathers. Now let's do a similar thing here with our 
Now this, I'm not going to use this really intense pink we got. This is our basically a brightened, shyish purple. Now let's do let's do some wing feather action in here too. And I will try to, like I did before, get a few nips of the that purple color into these feathers here too. I'll probably go uh, yeah, maybe one or two levels up from this on the pink stuff, but then also do some glazes to settle some things down. I don't know how much lighter I want the skin to be in some of these areas. I might even try to do some markings on there, but there's a lot going on here already. At a certain point, how much are you trying to squeeze into one figure? And do you end up kind of st stepping on your own toes where you try and put so much stuff in, there's no way that the person can actually get through that visual frenzy and see all the stuff you want them to. So you kind of basically counteract it with all the effects you are trying to do by doing just too much. It's something that I especially see with the with the competition figures. I call them technique golems. It's where somebody has tried to demonstrate that they clearly know how to do all of these different techniques, which is fantastic, except you can't show every single one of those techniques without literally it looks like you took one figure here that had object source lighting, and then you paste it on to another part here that has a bunch of freehand, and then over here, there's all these dramatic skin tones. And over here, there's texture on the cloak to show that you know how to do that. And it's just, it looks quite literally like a Mr. Potato Head figure or something like that, where you just were taking bits and pieces and sticking them on there just to show you know how to do them all. <laughs> and I, I, I hope... None of those things sounds too harsh or whatever, but it just, people, they really do put their heart and souls into these things, and I try to maybe make it so they just don't, not set themselves up for disappointment quite so much. So this is another, this is more of a spotter right here. All right, I got to just go in here real quick, like, and do some deleting of things here. Just give me a second here. I'm just going to put this down if we can. And there. Okay. So one more thing I got to do here. Okay, that's better. We're going to go back to our lighter color here on the wings. Here. And like I said, I'm still going to go back and do some darker glazes over this. But now you can see what the uh, the spotter lets me do. Maybe that the liner wasn't going to let me do as far as some of those little fine detail things. Now, obviously, still got to use that down here on some stuff. Now here, yeah, see, I don't want to get those too light. Where are we at here? There. Now, trying to figure out again, what necessarily everything is. Obviously, you got some straps there. I think I'm going to want to get some lighter magentas on that part of the flesh, but let's do this other, this other wing here first. And... 
the again the the base of it is shyish purple mixed with a white here let me get the chat where I can see it again so I mentioned the the purples and greens now that is here we go speaking of purples and greens you see the the transition there warmer green cooler green let's do our zoink let's make it black and white so the transitions are all the same it still has plenty of shading but let's bring our color back and now you see the oranges the greens that all balances out but there is our purple balance with the green and that is like I said that is my most recent army painting series that I've got going on right now the cipher lords we're on episode two of five. Each series roughly 12, 13 hours long over the course of the five episodes. First episode's always basing. And I, know I promised I'd show you the bases, but we'll get to that. I promise. See that, boy, the difference, if you go back to the start and see the difference in these wings from what they were about it even just 45 minutes ago maybe even less and then I still can go lighter I'm, I'm still maybe at a value 3 at the very lightest so far over here there of course, this is where you start having a lot of fun, too. Now I'm going to go mostly into, this is the maggot white, and mix it with my, that mint green there. Because we wanted to have this almost like it's a, a sharper metal type of a thing. So let's try and get that edge with a decent amount of light on it. Yeah, I definitely want to do some of these almost like as an ice type of a bird. I thought that could be pretty fun uh, on a snow base with icicles and everything. Uh, another one, the, the zinch look to it with the multicolored wings. Yeah, definitely got to do that. And sort of a desert type of theme. I wanted to do a, a jungle theme where you've got sort of the... They're splashing around in the water with lots of foliage. Maybe even leaping off of a tree branch or something like that. That could be very fun. Yeah, one of those uh, logs that's kind of hanging over a river or whatever. Now look at the, the difference that that makes. Starts so to really give us some nice transitions. Now let me bring up the chat again. Every time I go to mess with my controls, it covers up the chat. Kathy and I were both trying ever so slowly to rework our studio areas. Now, you know, there's the moving stuff around physically and getting all that kind of readjusted. There, there's definitely equipment that I still have to get. And that's that's one of the things that I I do with the. I mean, aside from trying to keep lights on, with with PayPal or not the PayPal the uh, Patreon stuff, because with the equipment that I need to create that one extra filming station for things like terrain videos and everything else and larger scale figures, that it's in the thousands of dollars there needed for that because these things I've got easily since I started doing the new videos again 20 terabytes worth of pictures and videos it, it's a memory hog to say the least now let's take some of this white mix it in with our this pink here right 
Let's get something really bright here on his tongue. Just want to make sure that's where you can see it. It is. This setup definitely makes this part a little easier. So yeah, a little bit lighter on the tongue there. Touch right there. And then I'm going to go to the wings. Just like we were doing with the that bluish white same thing now with a little hint of this pink here. Make sure some of that works its way up into that blue. And all of a sudden now those, that side of the wing starts to have as much interest as this side of the wing, which we're actually going to in just a bit here, once I'm done with this lightest light, I'm going to go back to the underside because, well, now I know how light I can go there. And we want to do use the same brush to do the more intricate little things on the underside of the wings there. I just want to make sure I advance some of this pink color into those feathers, almost call them leaves. Not quite sure why. Again, probably just fatigue. I might even just take some of this white here. Maybe we'll take a little bit of the yellow. Okay, fine. We'll take a little bit of the yellow here and let's go into this lava here, yeah. Because I didn't have one of these finer brushes out here at the time. Just trying to find myself a few areas where it's that almost white hot type lava stuff going on there. There. So. Flip to the underside here. Let's get ourselves some a few lights on these feathers here. Also on this talon or claw or whatever that might be. Gotta go back into my white there. That's a, maybe more of an ivory really. It's not that titanium white. And on the underside of the face, I really got to focus on this because it's, it's so close to the lava there. I want to make sure that that's bright enough. Oh, the leg over there, not going to quite mess with that, but I am going to, we got this blade right here, got to definitely lighten up a few parts on this. His tail. I have to start thinking of some of the stuff that has been, I don't want to say neglected, but it's just been set aside while we focus on other stuff. Now for the eyes, do I have Achillean green in here? I do. Bingo. That's what I was looking for. Let's take white. We'll mix that in with the Achillean green here. Now put that over the eye, start to shade those down a little bit because we got the lighter part of it and we need to get some of the darker part in. Now we're going to take some of the Achillean green and some of our shadows here. This is something I like to do 
in the shadow areas instead of just a darker purple color let's see what happens when we have yeah there we go so the the shadow area here is actually almost this greenish type color Remember, I promised you some green and now we just put that in there say so this just okay by comparison eh, whatever but in these dark areas it's that little bit of a color surprise people aren't expecting. They're expecting it is to be a lighter shade of purple, or a darker shade of purple, sorry. You can do this on cloaks. It's cool to do it on space marines. I mean, you name it, fur. People are expecting the fur just to be a darker brown, and all of a sudden it's green or blue. This is not even necessarily about trying to put a chaos look to this. It's just kind of sound visual principle there now I'm just gonna need to find some space here to be able to turn this into a Achillean green glaze that I want to drop down into some of the spikes right here And if it's too much, I just water some of that down. I can use one of my makeup sponges to take it away, but I'm just going to brush some of it away with the brush. And that's it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Might have to take another drink of water here pretty soon. As these are the, the darker glazes over the top of this. After I established kind of the lighter parts on the spines there, it's me just going over the top of those, a little bit of dark. Now let's go the other way here. Let's take some of that purple color, maybe lighten it up a touch. And I'm looking for some of these shadow areas here. Same thing. that we did uh, with the green, just sort of flipping it over and then using more of this purple. Let's get some transitions over in here even because we've got plenty of the orange and such in there. This is will just sort of create some de facto shadows and let's get a little more resolution here because in some areas we still have the original that just sort of feathered brush stroke stuff going on we don't really have any real structure there here let's get some of that dark ah yeah there we go get some a little bit of contrast there on that blade. Just a little something. So I'm going to take some of that, again, the Achillean green here. It really is a turquoise. I could take a turquoise paint color, but kind of already have it here. Let's get some of this on the rest of the face here. Now I'm going to take some of that same shyish purple here. Let's work some of that into the face there. We darken down some of that. Cause remember, that was just an initial little, OK, I'm going to put that light there so that I can glaze over the top of it. See, we're starting to get a few darks there and there. Gee whiz, as I put my hand on that, the whole thing just flexed. I think this one needs it even more. So let's again, grab some of our, and that shyish purple here. Almost watered down a bit.
darken down some of these. Well, they, they should be shadow areas and potentially just because, well, there's light being cast on them. So looking for a few <clears throat> reddish things there. We got plenty of stuff that's almost on the borderline of yellow. Let's make sure we got, <clears throat> sorry, enough red here. And this is, <clears throat> it's got plenty of the fluorescent paint in there. There's actually a good portion of fluorescence in that. So I'm going to grab myself a little something to drink here real quick. <clears throat> and hopefully that helps. Because that's annoying. Now this. Hopefully, we'll see more orange, or reddish-orange, and a little less of the yellow-orange. There we go. And I'm actually starting to put a little bit of texture into that. So intentionally sort of stippling the brush strokes here. Man, now you know why I just try to establish as much of the glow as I can in the beginning, because now I can think about these additional effects here you know how much further do I want to take this instead of imagine I did all of like what I did here and then flip it over and go oh well yeah I just covered that over with all of this object source lighting uh, again personal experience has taught me this so it's I'm not trying to be oh you know mr know-it-all here something like that no it's because those sort of things happen to me already and I'm just trying to prevent that from happening to you yeah, it's, now this has definitely it's more over say where the lava is so I want to make sure I get just a few, see these these few little marks here where it's hanging over. Yeah, this one, I should probably do the same over there too. Just inch my way up along there. Now here not quite as much blocking it as, as there is on this side because we got the rocks over here but over here not so much it's pretty much kind of over the lava but i'm gonna also use my <clears throat> use the darker version of this too for this stuff here And then I'm going to go back in with my purple. That's the shyish purple there. And I'll just knock some of these things down. Where I think, okay, there's too much light there. Let's make it darker. Or I need a little bit more of the feather texture here, but not always adding more light bits. Remember we talked about that a while back? Yeah, let's see if we can't get some darker separation on these feathers. I mean, the way they're laid out, it's it's almost like somebody just sort of stuck feathers on there. It's a little weird. That's something else I've had to get used to with these. Well, now they're just going back to these kind of fantasy figures because I've done so much either historical or steampunk or, or western just figures that are not this sort of high fantasy for so long that it can take a little while to get get used to it again all right i want this to be 
some some lights right in here on this part of the face it just kind of there's a not much happening right in here can you see that now you can that's it as it just was sort of leading down into a bunch of dark there and not much in the way of lighter colors or at least middle tones and there's nothing scary or complex about middle tones. It's It just is that point where it's not quite a light and it's not quite a dark. It's somewhere in between. And that's sort of where a lot of the fun happens with miniatures anyways. Is in that middle area. Now on the other side there's a lot of purple on the skin. But here we're going to get into some of this... I don't want to say teal color. It's more of a bluish gray, I guess. Because we got all those transitions in the wings. Why would the why do we want the body to just be one color? So let's get ourselves some. See here, we got that that pink there, but now we're starting to get some of this more of a bluish tone. Let's do something with his feet here. We haven't done much with that. Even some of these rocks, I might go in there and do something with those. Yeah, this definitely, I got to do something here when I'm thinking of, hmm, lightening that up a bit more. And you can see it doing that same stippling type motion there, just get a little bit of texture in it. do that here it, it makes there is some texture sculpted into the skin anyways so why not take advantage of that I'm gonna go back in a little touch of that purple there and even see it like here on the on the feathers what a difference just that little bit of glaze can make there. The eyes. I just wonder if there's a way to bring out the eyes a little bit more here. Do I want to almost try to make those glowing you know let's uh let's try something a little different something that's got some opacity to it here a little bit of basically sky blue let's see what that does yeah that's it, it, it's kind of like that the reference picture that you see down in the corner that's a little bit more along the lines of what I was thinking about. Now can I lighten that up a little? It's going to be tough for you to see it. I'm trying to get the underside of that lip. Almost like a little bit of a gemstone. Might even try to get some of this sky blue elsewhere on the bird here. See on the the feathers now. It, it'll be barely noticeable at all. Right? When people are looking at it, they're obviously they will focus in so much on the, the lava and that underside effect there. Ah, see on this, this side of the face, I also have to work on the same kind of light here that I did on the other side. So we haven't really, we haven't even spent two hours working on this. 
man, there's just so many different things that we've done with this. We've really gone wild with some of the colors. We showed several different ways of doing the, the contrasts. Because it's not just about light versus dark. There's cool versus warm. There's saturated versus unsaturated. There's a whole bunch of different contests going on all at once. And now I'm trying to find a few places, maybe on some of these spines, to bring out these lighter highlights here on the beak, maybe, on these talons or claws, whatever they might be. See if I can't get just a, yeah. This is looking for that under part of that eye. Then I've got to try and get the that slit of the pupil in there too. Yeah, I think we can probably do that with the with the shyish purple something along those lines. I could also take something like the blue liner here and do that same thing. So let's just grab some of that, thin it down. It's the nice thing about the blue liner painting. I kind of wish they never called it that because people think it is just for drawing lines, but really it's not. Just going to try and drop this right here. That works. Try not to put too much pressure on the the wings here and such. I mean, yeah, it is plastic, but... Okay, he's got another eye now. Now I might go back in here. Where are we at? Just make sure he's on the screen. I want to get some some more dark separation here using pretty much the straight shyish purple there because it has a little bit of red to it, but it's nice and dark. If you're wondering what would I be using if it was, say, well, if I was using the transparents from Pro Acryl, I'd probably be using the, yeah, the, the transparent purple with a little bit of maybe transparent blue or something along those lines. We'll get the same separation over on this side. Because the, in, in many ways the liner paints are a lot like some of these darker contrast paints. They, they can cover. Yeah, they can definitely do that. You can use them for glazing. I, just, I wish that people would not sort of pigeonhole things. Okay, there is this thing, and this is all this thing does. It does nothing else. You know, I'm not advocating using a screwdriver like a hammer, although maybe some of us have in a pinch. But their, their paints can be more flexible and do different things, far more different things than I, I believe people can understand just because they think, okay, this is only meant for this. Now, I, I want to get a dark in here, get separation between there, the all the oranges of the lava glow and everything else. Now, I'm also going to try and get a few darks into, into the skin on the murder chicken here so he's almost getting to be fried murder chicken yeah still haven't quite figured out do I want to go with some sort of oh 
brownish color to represent some sort of leather straps on those things, or do I not want to do that? I think what I am going to do is, now that that base is really, really dry, I'm going to go in here with maybe some of my original kind of mid-tone grays and such and see what we can do to liven up this side of the rocks. As we spend an awful lot of time on our, you know, the lava parts and that sort of thing and the glow on the rocks, but we haven't spent much on this side of it. So it's about time we get to that. And as always, if I get this too light, it's going to compromise the glowing effect, so i got to be careful with that. This is by no means a dry brush whatsoever. There's plenty of paint on that brush. I'm making this yeah, lighter by taking some of the other colors that are there. This is, we're almost getting to the infamous palette sludge stage. It's my favorite color of all, palette sludge. In many ways, it's just all of the different colors that have been sitting on the palette kind of mixed into one handy-dandy palette sludge. Or maybe not so handy for some, I don't know. And I can also go the other way with this. I can go back to my wild wood and try and instill some dark into this. So that's probably what I'm going to do after I finish with uh, what I'm doing right here. That's that, that whole thing of working back and forth. Just trying to keep this as, I don't know, ashen gray as possible. That, that volcanic rock look. And do the same sort of thing I've been doing in these sections of the, the wings here. We'll, we'll bring back that contrast wildwood. I, I could use brown liner to do the same thing. Oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll use a little bit of both because I've got a brown liner here somewhere. I also have red liner. There's my blue and there's my brown liner. We'll just find a spot for it here. here. Let's use a bit of the wild wood to actually thin down some of the brown liner here. And then Thin it down again a little more, use a little more of the wild wood there, and let's get some darks into this. Because again, we've you there's that in natural instinct to keep wanting to pour a highlight after highlight into things, and sometimes it just needs to be a little bit darker. There. Uh, I'll never forget the it was one of our in-person classes teaching that, and you could just tell somebody was not having an easy time with things, and it was it was a non-metallic thing, and he says, "Man, I I can't get any contrast on this. It it all looks the same, and I'm using white." And I just said, "Can I grab this for just a second? And I just did a little tiny bit of a dark glaze on one side of the sword blade, and well. <laughs> That was end of the problem because you just you couldn't make it any lighter, but you could sure as heck make it a lot darker. And once he realized that, that sort of solved that problem. So again, if you want to have light, you got to have dark, and this is where we're we start to add in some of that dark now. 
kind of restoring that back. Oh, hey, Devious Dungeon, how's it going? Yeah, the the wet dry brush, uh, damp brush. I think that was. But the, some people said, "What'd you say?" So I I think the the wet dry brush thing is is definitely a little <laughs> less hazardous thing to call it, I guess. That can get a little more darks over the top of even some parts of the the bird here too. But now we don't want to wipe out all the lights that we just added here. So it, it's a balance. It's always a, a constant balance between the forces of light and dark. Speaking of which, let's get some darks onto these rocks here. I'm mm, going to warm that up just a little bit. See if I can't. This crazy blade here that I probably want to act. Well, I'd try to do some rust on that. But if I did, it would probably just mingle with the lava effect. So that would sort of be a waste of time. I want to see if I can't lighten that up right there just a bit there. Now again, as soon as that proacryl ivory gets into stuff, any of those lighter proacryls, they are going to affect your your coat. It's going to be really much more opaque, and it's something you have to be aware of at all times. Getting a little more of the lighter sort of ashen gray onto this side now. Let's see. Well, I've got it's a little bit of the contrast green. I'm going to See if I can't work in some just almost green here. Just for a little more. Yeah. I'm sorry you can't really actually see that. You, know, you can see it here now. It will all just register as gray. But it's one more little bit of color variety in this that it just it needs. When you got this big old hunk of rock which is it's, it's bulletin board cork and uh, if you are going to be in the Chicago area more specifically I think Elmhurst towards the end of this month then that's Dragonfall and I am actually doing a basing class there or maybe two basing classes there but you can bet that the bulletin board cork is going to feature prominently in any basing class cuz it just it is such a Supremely flexible material. It represents so many different textures. I am going to go, you know what, we're going to go here with a bit more of a, look at that, that's the sky blue mixed with some of the transparent red. Makes a really deep magenta purple. Let's see if I can't. There, because the there's too much blue around that eye well then it's not gonna gonna lose some of that the bluishness of, yeah see that that ramps up the blue of the eye just by doing that so it was a good that was a good plan sometimes you do things you say hmm okay maybe shouldn't have done that but I like that and I'm going to get into some other places here too, even on the skin. And that is so dark. We still have so much of our original darks left to play with. That is, it's neat even at this stage. Because this color looks like it's light. And boy, it is 
nothing near a light color whatsoever. But now I'm going to go almost a bit more towards the sky blue with that. This will be a little lighter. And sort of, again, put some lights on that. On the flip side of things, it is not lava, so making that more almost towards the blue there. Oh, a touch more, I think, on the back here. I sort of like that blue, so... And doing some of that stippling action to... It's giving it a little bit of a more of a chaos look, less just like okay, some kind of reptile skin. And I still have that brighter pink that we used. I'm gonna try and slip in a few little dots of that here. Uh, sort of along the spine ridge here. Now the, the skulls, I'm going to maybe see what kind of things I can do on them to either bring them out a little bit. Remember we, we did the whole discussion about not wanting those to be that typical sort of bleached bone look on there. So we'll try and find some areas to highlight these, but again, if they are too bright, then we start to lose our lava effects and all other kinds of weird things happen. And the, the skulls, they're from Green Stuff World come in all sort of different shapes and there's the flaming skulls and you got these kind of giant skulls and orc skulls and stuff they were perfect for the untamed beasts and this is actually the other one that we were fooling around with earlier so you can see now and they've got a little bit of shading and such on them what they look like I just lightened up that green that we did and once again looking to just put a little more depth into what we've done on the the rocks here we've got so much on the bird now we don't want to distract from it but this green is really going to register as gray believe it or not what in the world? Why would you be putting in green on the same base where you've got lava effects and everything else? I need that to separate from the bird because if the bird and the base are both pretty much the same. Now, if he was some kind of lava murder bird or murder, no, murder chicken, that's what they are. They are murder chickens. And if I missed anybody in the chat or whatever, I do apologize for that. It was a really super long day on pretty much little to no sleep. And now it's 4.28 a.m. here. Holy smokes. So it, it's been an even longer day than I thought it was. Now, there's a couple of these rocks here again. I don't know if you can actually see them. I'm trying not to cover them up with my, either my hand or the brush or the bird. Because yes, the the you do the dry brush thing. That's that's nice. You can do that for a good portion of it, but there's something to be said for doing. 
especially here where I've got so many nifty little textures. Yeah, I, I really am glad I've changed up that base a little bit because now actually I've got even more different types of contrast with my lava glow. Oh, what do we want to do on this tail? We gotta do something over here. There's not a lot of anything happening. These couple of rocks that he seems to be using to leap with is gotta do a little something to those two. Sorry if that's wandering off the screen there. At a certain point the fatigue even gets to me. Let's get a little touches of light right here. Cause it, it's we put that we did the darker wash in there. That was that was great. But we can't wipe out all of the that was just kind of a mass of dark. We have to break that up a little bit. Trying to find a few lighter highlights along this. Ah, do I play Warcry? Well, we are just learning the system, and believe it or not, I'm learning the system the same way I learned Bolt Action, the same way I'm relearning Lord of the Rings, and the way I learned the, the Song of Ice and Fire. I'd have to say my primary game is Bolt Action. I guess you could say that because I've got 17 different armies that I'm working on. Then second to that would definitely have to be Lord of the Rings. Actually, the whole reason that I started playing bolt action in the first place is there was similarities to me in the way the mechanics of the two games worked. And I, I'll be doing now. If actually, if you look on the YouTube channel here, you can see four, yeah, four bolt action battle reports. I want to do Lord of the Rings battle reports. And I will be doing eventually Warcry battle reports. We just we have to get the terrain going. That's that's the biggest thing. And at some point, Kathy and I are actually hoping to do sort of an evening with the Wapples thing, where well we we paint together, and that'll be here on on this YouTube channel. But also maybe where we get to try and play a game or two of Warcry, something like that, because of the the space, you know it it's easier to fit in a smaller area than say the six by four nature of bolt action and even with lord of the rings i mean i just i don't really like playing it on a four by four we always played it on a six by four there was just there was more oh that the movement of both forces trying to close on each other and the tension of okay you know, these, these early moves, well, nothing that seems to be happening, they're actually really important because when stuff happens, it really happens. I am also doing Cruel Seas ships. You'll, you'll find a couple of those videos, too, on the YouTube channel. Eventually, I'll be doing battle reports for that. What was uh, I used to do the Wild West Exodus thing, but once they did the big change in the rules, it kind of wiped out all of the fluff and everything that we had. So we, that's when we sort of moved on to bolt action, where it's really hard to change the fluff. The fluff stays consistent. Who'd have thought? And, oh, and then there's the research of it, too, that I really enjoy. Because I've always hey, history. I, I used to do Civil War reenacting and such. So that's why I like the historical side of that. Now the the Cipher Lords. That's going to be the first faction that I try to play. Mostly because well they're going to be painted. Because I'm painting those in that army painting series. So you can maybe even recognize some of the, uh, yeah, some of the 
same greens I used on this bait. So this is your, your Cypher Lords base here. See, it's the same exact cork that we used. And you can see we got the, the greens also, but those are a little bit warmer than the greens that we used in here. Okay, so what I'm going to actually, at this point, because it is now almost 440 here, I will actually probably be signing off here pretty soon. I do appreciate everybody that showed up. Tyler, Bethany, Anthony, L. Gary, who was the first Gary, first, last, Hans, Trevor, George, James, everybody that showed up, much appreciated. Here, I'm just going to scroll this down. So what I will do is, if you go to Instagram, that's Wapelius on Instagram, you'll be able to see finished pictures of things like that Warcry Cypher Lord there. That, the pictures of that are on my Instagram account. You can check out the, the blog there, which... Is probably going to be scrolling across the screen right about now. Yep, step by step tutorials on the blog. That's what Pelias blogspot.com. You want to look at the Lord of the Rings stuff? Well, there's tons of posts there. You want to see my Tomb King's army, my Lizard Man army? There's hundreds of posts. And that's not a pair of, that's not like an exaggeration. There are hundreds of them just waiting to be looked at. I'll just add a few more little do thingies here. That's another highly technical painting turn. And well, I'll just the rest of this is stuff I have to kind of do off camera because it's just there's no way you can actually see some of the things that I'm actually dropping paint on. So thanks again, everybody. Be sure to you know drop a like on this if you can because YouTube likes that and. When I do the subscribe thing, then you and the notification buttons, then you know when I'm actually doing stuff, crazy things like this. And we will we'll try and do these in different color schemes. Some of them in snow and all that other sort of stuff. And desert scheme, jungle scheme. But thanks a lot, guys. I'm going to catch you on the next one in a few days.